State your name, your age, and where you was born. My name is uh, Rasheen Deshaun Moore. Uh, I'm 45 years old. I was born in Brownsville, Brooklyn, St. John's Hospital. Where were you raised at? In East New York, Brooklyn. Your whole time in East New York? I think we moved from East New York when I was probably about 11. Going on 12. We moved to Southside Jamaica, Queens. Um, who was in your household when you was growing up? Shit, my mom, Dukes, my brothers. There was eight of us at the time. Then my sister had my nephew, Dion. Uh, so that made nine. Let me see. There was nine of us in a three-bedroom house. What did you attend school at, grade school, like third grade to sixth grade? What are you? I uh, went to PS 190, East New York, Brooklyn. How did you feel about, you know, New York City school systems back then? How did you feel about school? Were you excited? Were you, you know, apprehensive? Did you go just because you had to go? Cool. I was going to school for free lunch. What are you talking about? But education-wise, I mean, if you was willing to learn, you could learn. If you wanted to be a knucklehead all day, that's what you did. I, I turned out pretty good, I would say. So as a kid growing up in New York City, like, what were your hobbies? What were you into back in these formative years, you know? And I lived on 3 Louisiana Avenue between New Lots and Hageman. There's nothing but lots in my neighborhood. All we did was go from lot to lot, build clubhouses, throw rocks, play baseball in the middle of the street, and of course we had us a crate. We put on a telephone pole, made us basketball hoops. Nothing to do. Vacant lots with buildings and houses yeah. were stood. That's what you're talking about, correct? The majority of vacant lots with houses here and there. But they gentrified it now, and it, it looked really good now. So... Back in that time, if you can remember, like, was you into music? Did you listen to music back then? Did you listen to the radio like the rest of us? Or yeah. was it your brothers or whatever? Or like, Yeah, I, I knew how to moonwalk when I was like three or four years old. <laughs> you know what I mean, I was always into music. And, uh, you know, most definitely. Yeah, I was, I, I was always into music. The radio playing you. Yeah, my mom's, she played all kinds of records. She, My mom's had a, a huge record collection, too. And you know, she played all the oldies. She, she a soul sister. Shout out to my mom. So besides dancing, was you rapping or thinking about rapping back then or being an MC? I ain't start writing until what? Probably when I was in second grade, I started writing. So that probably makes me, what, about seven, eight years old? Who was you influenced by to start writing? Like what, what, just music in general? Kane, man. Don't even do Big that. Big Daddy Kane. Shout out to Big Daddy Kane, yeah, man. But this is the deal, like, yeah. you listen to Kane and then I, I, I'm, I'm calling myself some kind of rapper or whatever, I write my rhymes and then it drops something new and I'm like, yeah, I, I'm still not good enough. Make me want to throw my raps in the trash. But yeah, shout out to Kane, man. It's okay. I want you to take a second and think. What was your first memory of crime, poverty, and drugs as far as in New York? I, I know you mentioned that you went to school for free lunch, but what was your first memory, like, going back how young to what age? Were you remember, like... I, I, just, I, I told you where I grew up at, on Louisiana Avenue. This is East New York, Brooklyn, when that was the murder capital of the world. So, you got to think, my block had two different blocks converging into one. So, you got to think, on one end of the block, you got two or three different crack spots. And on the other end of the block, you got dope fiends and cocaine. You take your pick. Crime was very, very high in the 80s. In New York City. In New York City, you know it. And East New York, Brooklyn was the murder capital of the world. They got a documentary about how crooked the police department was, 75th Precinct in East New York, Brooklyn. If you don't believe the stuff that I'm telling you, you could go double check that. 
Okay, so um, back then, did you ride the subways and the buses oh, of the definitely. 80s? Most definitely. What was that experience like as a kid, if you can remember? I mean, man, my mom used to take us on the train and the buses. We ain't had no car. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we rode the train with her by, by ourselves once we knew how to do it, you know, hop the turnstile. <laughs> Word. Um... So, besides Brooklyn, where else have you lived in New York City? I lived in the Bronx. I'm on the South Side, Jamaica, Queen. Shout out to South Side. Uh, yeah, did I say the Bronx? Yeah. Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queen. The last Just place. one section in Brooklyn? No, nah, we lived in... I was born on Hawthorne Street. That's in Brownsville. Okay. But like I said, I grew up on Louisiana Avenue, which is Williams Avenue. They converge. It's like a big church in the middle right there. And, you know, that that's pretty much where I grew up at. That's East New York, though. So describe the differences for people who never been to New York City and like what it is to live in what Queens is like in comparison to what the Bronx is like or what Brooklyn is like. Or is everything was okay. just one... Nah, like, in East New York, like I said, it was like a lot of lots. You feel me? The buildings and, you know, that's Brooklyn. But in Queens, it's like a lot of houses. You know what I mean? All the stores are kind of like on the boulevard. So, like, if you want to go to a store or something, most of the buildings are pretty much on the boulevard. Like, I used to live 110-33, 167th Street between... 110th Road and 111th Avenue. So I'm in between Guy Brewer Boulevard on this side and Merrick Boulevard on that side. But both of those boulevards are probably five blocks this way and five blocks that way. But in Brooklyn, it's different. Like I walk to the corner and that's Linden Boulevard. Linden Boulevard go all the way from Queens all the way through Brooklyn. You understand what I'm saying? So it, it, it's kind of different. It's a lot of houses in Queens. So as a kid growing up in New York City, in the era when New York City was New York City, crazy with crime, you know, all the stereotypes, everything you hear is true. How did how did you feel growing up there? Did you feel like I'm a part of this or this is what it is or this is, you know, messed up? I uh, want we, something we, different we, or we, it's we just like this up. what it is? We was fucked up. You know, I started hustling. You know what I mean? I was hustling in East New York before we moved to Queens. I was hustling in Queens. We were starving, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that era, that era took over for, for, for me and a whole bunch of other people just like me. So elaborate on what the hustles is, because some people may just automatically assume like hustling is only, you know, selling drugs, I mean, which we know that's not true. Like elaborate. So at some point, you know, you got a little older, stopped doing petty crime and hustling in New York, and you left New York City. And what was that? What was that about when you left New York City? And how old were you? Uh, I, I, I didn't stop. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I was hustling all the way to, to the day I came down here. That's how I got down here. Okay, so you left New York City and came to West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia. My brother was already down there doing his dumbness. He came home. He used to be in and out. Of, he used to be in and out all the time. Came home. He got hit by a car. So the nigga ended up having to stay for a little while. So coming from the hustle and bustle of New York City, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, how was you know? How did it differ for you? How did you feel once you got out here? You know, take out the part of, you know, being hungry and hustling like the culture shock is totally different. And how how was that for you? Okay, so like I say probably the whole time my brother had a cast, he had a whole a whole leg cast. So the whole time he had a cast, I was holding him down. And he was telling me, yo, you getting your little money, da 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 da. We gonna take that, we're gonna go do something, and I'm gonna take you with me. What you spending right now, you can make da 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 which is like, you know, triple, quadruple the amount. So the plan was once he healed to come down. 
You feel me? So was it harder to adjust to the slower pace from coming from a spot like New York uh, City I, to I coming was, here? I was here to get money, man. I wasn't, you know, worrying about no speed or no tempo or, you know, how fast a person was moving or not, unless it came down to the money. So, so it's safe to say, like at that age, you you never envisioned yourself being anything carpenter, plumber, or nothing. It was yeah, just I get money, to be just. Electrician. Yeah, I wanted to be an electrician. I went to uh, East New York Vocational. That's a school in East New York, Brooklyn. You know, and I was go I was going to get some credits for electrician. So I could have went, you know, and got the trade real quick after high school if I wanted to. But I ended up dropping out because we moved from East New York, South Side Jamaica, and the commute was killing me. It was like two hours there, two hours back. And I had to be to school like 7.30 in the morning, so imagine. Yeah. So, I mean, to um, change gears, but keeping in line where we at. So, um, what was the soundtrack? What was who, what was you listening to at this time as a teenager? Like, what was the musical influences at this time? Man, we used to listen to a lot of radio. Like, me and my brother one, shout out to my brother one. We shared a room, like... When we lived in Queens, I guess it would be like the laundry room, but we converted into our room. He put us a little bunk bed in there, a little dresser, and we had a little a little radio with two speakers on it, but we only had one speaker. We used to listen to a lot of radio. My cousin Josh had came home from jail. RP to him, shout out to him. So like like I asked you before, um, cause this would be years later, was you rapping, freestyling and writing music and yeah. Stuff yeah. at this time. I was writing. I was writing. But it was some niggas from Queens. They was a little rap group and shit. They used to hustle on 109 and, and Merrick. And uh, they had a little group. And they was the niggas. It was this black nigga named Doom. Shout out to him. Nigga named Peanut. And... The, the boy Danielle, they they had a group. They was, you know, they was they was the niggas. You feel me? Yeah. So during your teenage years, young adult years, did you identify with any type of religions or anything like that? Did you subscribe to anything? Man, nah, nah. So besides, um, you know. Being poor and that being a motivation, a struggle and a hustling. Like, what else motivated you back then? Besides, I was trying to eat, bro. That's it. My only focus was to eat, nigga. Like, we was literally starving. You feel me? Like, True. nigga was fucked up for real, for real. You know what I mean? And I had little brothers and sisters, so, you know. Shout out to my brother Ace, because Nico left. My older brother D, he left, so he kind of like was holding us down when my mom wasn't there. Like, my bro, shout out to him, for real. Before he came down here, that was before he came down here. So would you say, like, being that hungry, you know, being that thirsty, you know, going through things that, like, did you ever care about getting locked up? Or have you ever been locked up? You don't have to elaborate, mm -hmm. but been locked up a couple times. I'm talking about as as a youngster. Like, you know, when we're young, we all do things like, fuck that, you know? Uh, I got I got bagged on 110 in Merrick at a dice game, and I wasn't even playing. They came to the suite. That was like two weeks before I came here. 110 in Merrick in Queens. Yeah. This was like, like two weeks before I came down here, that shit happened. So basically, what I'm trying to say is like, with the thirst and the hunger being so real, was you uh, scared of getting locked up? Or uh, that was a thing that no, just I was wasn't in your mind? locked up in New York. Because that, uh... Man, what's the fucking shit? The Stop and Frisk shit had just started. Yeah, that was and crazy. And Giuliani had just gotten the office, and he was busting everybody ass. I mean, everybody. And Stop and Frisk, and, you know, I was a little nigga, little... You know, I was I was a bantam weight. I was real skinny, so you know, I, I packed my thing. I, I made a little bit of money, so I had to protect myself. So yeah, I was scared of them niggas. 
So you mentioned, we're talking about back then, you know, 80s, 90s, things like that. Um, you said, like, your older brother left the nest. Uh, was um, anybody um, locked up or in prison, any of your siblings? Yeah, my oldest brother, that nigga did a, a long stretch. He, he don't play no games. He ain't been to the money. In New York State? In New York State, a few other states. You know, Where was brother. his prison sentence at? <laughs> He did a few bids. I can't I can't really go into detail about that because I don't have the facts on it. Yeah. But it was a couple of different places upstate. You know what I mean? He did a few light bids, but then he did the long one. You know what I mean? Shout out to him. How how did that affect you, seeing your brother do a long bid? My nigga, like, you know, he'd be looking for, like, somebody to look up to and shit. He wasn't there, and you know, like I said, shout out to my brother Ace, because me and him, we was like, my moms used to always dress us like twins and shit, but we was real tight, but he was big bro, like, that was big bro, like, I'm my big bro, I look up to my big bro, and the nigga, he taught me, he taught me everything, you feel me? I got down here because of him. True. So, um, how old were you when you had your first child? When you became a parent? That was eighteen. No. What did you have? Girl, boy? I had a girl. Shout out to my baby girl. Shout out, lady, baby. How did that change your perception on life in, in general by having a kid? I was still doing my thing. I was thinking about jobs and all kinds of shit like that, but I ain't never jump on nothing. I ain't jump on nothing until a long time later. Like, I ain't start working until I was, what, probably like 25 or 26. I had her when I was like 18. I was knee deep, you know what I'm saying? I was getting to it. So what job was you working at when you was like 25? Do you remember? My first job was at Show Me's in South Charleston. What you used to do? Just wash dishes. So, were you were you still writing music, rapping and rhyming during these times? I always wrote. I always wrote. I had bags and bags of notebooks for years and years and years and years. I lost a bunch of bags. I got into a wreck. So I fucked up my eye. That's why I wear these glasses now. Got some glass in my eye. So you said you always wrote. So is your passion for music about the music, the fame, or the money? Like, it's, I mean, of course, everybody would, I guess, want to make a bunch of money. But what, what's the passion behind it? To be famous or to make a bunch of money? Or are you just that much into the sport? If I had to say anything, I would say, like, for me, it's about capturing that emotion. So you want to convey that emotion. So if you feel in a certain type of way and you broadcast that or make that translate to the music and somebody feel the same way you feel, then I feel like you did your job. It so could be, It could be a happy song, sad song. It don't matter. It's all about emotion and feel. For me, for me. So it's safe to say that um, emotions inspire the kind of music you write. Most kind of, of it. Most of it. I can honestly say I probably wrote my best shit when I was broke, fucked up, and depressed. But I still write some good shit when I was on top of my game, but the conversation is different. I mean, I feel like I dig a little deeper when I'm <laughs> fucked up or down on my luck. So, um... Or you have any hur do you have any hurdles to you creating music like writer's block or you know you caught up in whatever else you caught up in and you can't do it or or is it just it comes to you easy? It comes to me pretty much easy. If I had to go right now to make a song I could right now. But that don't mean I won't take five years writing a song. That so, don't mean I won't take thirty minutes writing a verse, an hour, a day, it don't matter. It's it's when I capture that emotion. That Dr. Dre bullshit. 
Not necessarily Prime no too. Dr. Dre. I, I, I heard Redman say that shit. He, he'll write one word and then won't fuck with a verse for months. So, I mean, I'm not the only one. That, I mean, I'm not the only one that have that process. So when you have the, when you write the one word and put it to the side, are you writing anything else or you're not writing nothing until you finish that? Probably not. Probably not. If I don't get that, I probably won't go on. I go to something else. I don't force it. This is what it happened. Thinking about a beat that I like in my head because I got like so many beats, right? Okay, turn the beat on. Go to my lyric. Read it all. It's still here. If I can add something, it'll just come to me. You understand what I'm saying? And then we'll add that. So do you write with or without beats? Now some people both. write the beats. I could do both, but I'd rather write to a beat. That don't necessarily mean I'm going to record to it, though. Because I write to one beat and then record the song to another. Because mm. my philosophy is this. You know how you uh, learn a song on the radio and shit? Then yeah. you could switch the words around and play with it and flip it and bounce it. You got to be able to do your own shit like that. So when I write, my song could go to any beat. Yeah. This is my song. I true, wrote it. True. I know how to flip it and bounce it just like I would do a song that I like. And I'm just switching the words around to make it fit me or whatever. Or, you know, however you would say it. So do you find more joy in writing original songs or flipping other people's? Original shit for me. I got like a million stories. And they all the truth. Original. 